So this is an update on what we've been doing around the network of, and I always get the words in the wrong order, so I'm going to read it out, the network of teaching excellence in computer science. Um, I think it's worth re-emphasizing one of the points that uh, Simon was saying, which is that the DfE have said ICT is going to be compulsory now at Key Stage 4, so that's fantastic, you're not going to get sacked. Um, and one of the other things that was said on Tuesday by the DfE is that the current programme of study is not fit for purpose. They explicitly said that out loud. So it's not just that they're doing a U-turn and thinking, oh dear me, we need to have this back again. They really do want to reform it radically because those were the exact words that were used. So this is going to be, I think, a superb opportunity for making sure computer science is a large chunk of what's going to be in there, I hope, in that programme of study. Dump. Um, and this has not got anything really to do with my talk, but I just can't resist putting this on because I think this is fantastic that we have the Prime Minister saying Eric Schmidt is right. And we have the Chancellor of the Exchequer saying, yes, we need computing in schools. This is just amazing. Could you imagine 18 months ago having the Prime Minister and the Chancellor standing up and saying that? It is really awesome. And of course, we've got Michael Gove saying this, which is fantastic. I've put this one up, although I know Simon had it as well, because uh, when he said... Uh, we are interested, or he would be interested, in considering whether computing should be included as an option within the EBAC. One of the things we are now doing, in collaboration with CAS, of course, is preparing a report on the rigour and the progression provided by the new GCSEs that are coming out. And we know that the DfE are looking for that, forward to that report actually being published, and they will actually pay it some attention. How much of an effect it have, of course, that's a different question. But again, it's incredibly positive that they actively want to work with CAS and the BCS to understand those GCSEs because they are looking to see if they can include them in the EBAC. That is fantastic. Okay. So, again, repeating what Simon said, we've got the Royal Society report. That is an absolutely superb report, uh, and all of us in the room were well aware of it, but one of the things we realised after it had been published is that most head teachers probably are not. And when we started to sit down and think, well, OK, how exactly do you get a head teacher on board? How do you persuade them to actually take this stuff seriously? We realised what we needed was something that was the network of teaching excellence in computer science. We need to take the incredible enthusiasm that's come from CAS and institutionalise it. So it's not just the teachers in this room jumping up and down at school and saying, wow, we've got to teach computer science. It's the head teacher that thinks, right, computer science, that is business as usual. This is a core part of what my school does. It's what makes my school successful. You know, I'm part of this network. I believe in it. I'm going to push it. I'm going to support that teacher who's jumping up and down and getting excited about the new computer science stuff. So we sent, uh, you all know this, so we sent every head teacher in a state maintained school, a copy of the Royal Society Report, and the CAS curriculum, because that is a superb document. And very importantly, it has glowing endorsements from Google and Microsoft, which between them are the powerhouses of the IT industry. Well, there is that little company called Facebook as well, but you know. Uh, so we sent all of this out. We sent it out to 3,300 head teachers. The reason we sent it to state-maintained schools is, one, it's actually very expensive to send out a very large, fat pack to people, so we were a bit limited by budget. But two, strictly speaking, all of the DfE announcements apply to state-maintained secondary schools. So that's why it was targeted at those schools. What's been marvellous is that um, we originally thought, gosh, how are we going to persuade 250 schools that they might like to be part of this? Because actually, this means the head teacher's got to, in some form or other, admit that this is something the school needs to look at. And we've got, um, I think it was 503 schools in the end registered. Uh, admittedly, I think one of those was in Hong Kong and one was in Singapore. But even when you weed out some of the ones that we're not actually really going to be able to do much for, it's still almost 500. What's also been marvellous is the enthusiasm from the universities to get interested in it. This is not a complete list of the universities that have uh, shown an interest. It's just that the slide is finite, and those are the number of, one, number of universities I could squeeze on. What's amazing is if you think a couple of years ago, universities were not tremendously interested in ICT because as far as they were concerned, ICT had nothing to do with them. Now, we have a huge amount of excitement about this thing called computer science. Well, there are 98 universities in this country that teach computer science suddenly their subject is going to be taught at school. 
suddenly there is a reason for a university to really care about that subject in school, and that is what has actually created the enthusiasm. So we've been inundated with universities. Hello, the sun's coming out, we can't see the slides. Never mind. Um, we've been inundated with universities that are saying, well, what's going on here? Can we help? What's happening? It's all terribly interesting. It's great. Um, the other thing that we are pleased about, of course, is that with CAS and with the STEMnet ambassadors, we've got a huge supply of prof computing professionals that also want to help. So if we link those in with the universities, with the schools, we've got a fantastic recipe for success. Well done. So what are we trying to do? What we're trying to do is get to the point by 2020, half of the schools in the country are offering a GCSE in computer science. Um, we want as well to make sure that, this is a, that they're doing it well. So that, you know, compared to other sciences like physics or biology, we're getting the same sorts of numbers of students coming through at grade C or better. Um, and we want to make sure that we are creating inspirational computer science resources covering every key stage, which are rigorous, that fit in with the Royal Society report, and which are being maintained and sustained by the community. That's what it's all about. What we want in order to get that is we want half the universities in the country supporting this. And given the enthusiasm I've seen so far, unless we seriously screw up, which is always a possibility, uh, I think we will actually achieve that. Um, we want to make sure all of the big companies are helping out here, uh, producing professional ambassadors for free. Um, and that we eventually get to the point where when you have somebody who is the head of the school computer science department, they get professional status through some route or other, whatever that might be. So how are we going to do that on um, a bit of sticky tape and a piece of string? Uh, well, of course, it's all going to depend on funding, what we can actually achieve. So we've got quite an ambitious plan at the moment. We're currently talking to people about how funding is going to come online. So this is all rather speculative. Think to yourself whenever you see these things, yes, that's if they get all the money that they're, they're trying to, to gather. But um, we hope that by the end of the first year, we will have... Um, talk to 30 universities are actually doing something useful. Something useful being, for those of you who've probably forgotten what was in the information pack that went out, the idea is that the universities are going to help facilitate and provide CPD in the foundations of computer science. Because we think there are lots of enthusiastic teachers around, but they're a little bit nervous about whether they actually know enough computer science to teach the subject. So the key role for universities here is to put on those courses or to make sure they happen or to work with people who can provide fundamental computer science CPD so the teacher could come out at the end of that CPD thinking, ah, yeah, I do actually know some computer science. I can now go and join in with the CAS network and I can pick up all the exciting things I can do from a pedagogic... Pedag Pedagogy point of view, <laughs> teaching point of view, and make it happen. So to do that, uh, one of the things we hope we'll be able to fund is to get hold of 25 to 30 computer science expert teachers, but I'm told um, that I should call them master teachers now and the new logo. Um, but in the old logo, it's sort of advanced skills teacher, but now plus plus. Um, so basically, we want to get hold of about 25 to 30 really key people that we know are really good, they do good stuff, and try and help them to get a bit of funding or give them a bit of funding so that they can spend an afternoon a week generating really good resources that they're going to distribute around the network. Um, and the idea is this is going to help other teachers to actually do good stuff. We're going to get um, a bunch of coordinators to actually do various things. A bit on the next slide about what they're going to do. Hopefully four of those, maybe even five of those. Um, and we're going to put together a steering group for the initial year, which is going to guide all of this through. I should say... Um, we're very much pushing this at the moment, as in BCS is really pushing it really hard. The vision is that within three or four years, the schools own the network. The schools drive the network. The schools decide what the agenda is and the strategy is and the plan. And the rest of us then just become supporters that are in the, in the sidelines cheering on and saying, yeah, if that's what you want to do, we'll do it. Dum. So the concrete things that we are definitely going to do at the moment... We have Tom Crick, who's going to be our university coordinator. Where's he gone? Tom, there you go. The dashing young man in the middle there, reading his email. So, uh, and Mark Dawling is the other person that's going to help us out. Is Mark here today? Yay, there's Mark. So, Tom is going to be going round 
uh, infusing and exciting the universities and getting them plugged in and actually getting them actively doing things, because there's a huge difference between somebody saying, wow, that's a great idea, can I help, and actually making sure they really deliver. So Mark's, uh, Tom's going to be our hard man. Mark's going to be doing similar things around the schools uh, and working with those 35 to, well, 25 to 30 uh, expert stroke master teachers. I'll skip through some of these because this is going to, you've probably read to the end of the slide before I've even started on it. Um, then as well as that, we need some other coordinators. One who's going to be looking after the conference, working with uh, key stakeholders to make sure we know what the good practice is, because you want to shout and brag about all the good stuff that's going on. And we want another one who's going to be talking about how to connect secondary schools and primary schools. There's a nice small job for somebody to manage. Um, and we think, uh, well, well, not we think, we are going to have a big kickoff meeting in September, very much thanks to Manchester University and Microsoft, who are making all that happen. So we're going to have a trip to Manchester in September, which uh, I'm very pleased about, given that this is the year of uh, Turing's uh, centenary. So that's good. Done. That's it. Any questions? Yes, stunned. Brilliant. I can sit down then. Thank you.